A mathematician found out that a pipe was leaking, so he called a plumber. The plumber changed a gasket and asked for $100. But how is it possible? You've been working for only 10 minutes and it takes me a full week to earn $100, exclaimed the mathematician. Well, that's why I became a plumber. But let me tell you something. I'll give you the address of my company. Go there and say that you want to work as a plumber and don't mention that you are a mathematician. And so the mathematician did. Soon he earned quite a lot of money, but the company decided to educate the plumbers and send them to primary school. On the first day, the mathematician was asked to write the equation for the surface of a circle on the blackboard. He could not remember it, but he wanted to use integral calculus to derive it. However, he made some errors and obtained a negative result. He repeated the calculations twice, thrice, and still obtained a negative result. He looked stressed at the class and found all the fellow plumbers shouting to him, Change the range of integration! Change the range of integration! Story 2, A Lented Engineer the authorities were leading a priest, a drunkard, and an engineer to the guillotine. They asked the priest if he wanted to face up or down when he met his fate. The priest said that he would like to face up so that he will be looking toward heaven when he dies. So, they raise the blade of the guillotine, release it, and it comes speeding down and suddenly stops just inches from his neck. The authorities take this as divine intervention and release the priest. Next, the drunkard comes to the guillotine. He also decides to die face up, hoping that he will be as fortunate as the priest. They raise the blade of the guillotine, release it, and it comes speeding down and suddenly stops just inches from his neck. So the authorities release the drunkard as well. Next is the engineer. He also decides to die facing up. They slowly raise the blade of the guillotine when suddenly the engineer shouts, WAIT! I think the problem is right there where the cable is binding. Science requires telling the truth despite everything. Einstein had to speak at an important science conference. On the way there, he tells his driver that looks a bit like him. I'm sick of all these conferences. I always say the same things over and over. The driver agrees. You're right. As your driver, I attended all of them. And even though I don't know anything about science, I could give the conference in your place. That's a great idea, says Einstein. Let's switch places then. So they switch clothes, and as soon as they arrive, the driver dressed as Einstein goes on stage and starts giving the usual speech, while the real Einstein, dressed as the car driver, attends it. But in the crowd, there is one scientist who wants to impress everyone and thinks of a very difficult question to ask Einstein, hoping he won't be able to respond. So this guy stands up and interrupts the conference by posing his very difficult question. The whole room goes silent, holding their breath, waiting for the response. The driver looks at him, dead in the eye, and says, Sir, your question is so easy to answer that I'm going to let my driver reply to it for me. Story 3 The villagers were delighted. A sadhu who performed miracles had come to their village. Every morning and evening, they would gather at the temple with specially prepared delicacies as offerings to the sadhu. When Tanali Rama heard of this, he smelt a rat. He went to the temple and sat near the holy man. The sadhu began reciting shlokas. To Rama's surprise, he went on repeating the same shloka over and over again. Rama realized that he was a fraud. Suddenly, he leaned forward and plucked a strand of hair from the sadhu's beard. I have the key to heaven, he shouted triumphantly. The villagers looked startled. This sadhu is so great that if I keep the hair from his beard with me, I will be blessed forever, said Rama. Immediately there was a scramble as the villagers rushed to get hold of a hair from the sadhu's beard. The frightened sadhu ran for his life and was never heard from again. Next story. A pastor, who shall we say was humor impaired, attended a conference to help encourage and better equip pastors for their ministry. Among the speakers were many well-known and dynamic speakers. One such boldly approached the pulpit and gathering the entire crowd's attention said, the best years of my life were spent in the arms of a woman that wasn't my wife. The crowd was shocked. He followed up by saying, and that woman was my mother. The crowd burst into laughter and delivered the rest of his talk which went over quite well. The next week, the pastor decided he'd give this humor thing a try, 
and used that joke in his sermon. As he surely approached the pulpit that sunny Sunday, he tried to rehearse the joke in his head. It suddenly seemed a bit foggy to him. Getting to the microphone, he said loudly, The greatest years of my life were spent in the arms of another woman that was not my wife. The congregation inhaled half the air in the room. After standing there for almost ten seconds in stunned silence, trying to recall the second half of the joke, the pastor finally blurted out, And I can't remember who she was. <laughs>